Hi Harmonica friends! I hallowed myself to open this chapter dedicated to the vibrato with the definition of the famous Dr. Fussi, Italian excellence in this field. The professor tells us that more than vibrato, we should talk about the vibratos. And in this video, we will discover how to have a powerful ally at our side that will allow us to give more life and expressiveness to our sound. The vibrato can be of two types, a variation of the pitch of the note and in the harmonica will be only downwards and doing this with a variable speed, so that the listener has an average frequency of reference during these oscillations. The second vibrato is dynamic and intensity fluctuation. Now let's see how to do both technique with the harmonica. By closing the instrument in our hands, when we close and open them, we can vary not only the characteristic of the sound but also the intensity, the volume. The movement can be obtained in different ways, always with a certain speed, without compromising the safety of our posture. Depending on the finger we will use for the register, either the index finger or the thumb, we can choose to get the vibrato by moving the right or left hand. Index. Thumb. To increase the effectiveness and the speed, we can get to raise and lower the entire left forearm with the consequent shift of the harmonica. For this operation there are not specific techniques, the effect we are looking for will have to come from the movement. The disadvantage of this way of uh, this vibrato could be in the case where with the excessive or uncoordinated movement we risk interfering in the general and hard posture. There are many harmonicists that have used this technique, first of all Larry Hadler. You can find many videos of the master and you can clearly see the use of an in this way. The diaphragmatic vibrato is the one commonly used by wind instrumentalists and singers. 
There are people who have a natural predisposition to use the diaphragm and easily manage to vibrate, but in most cases we will have to apply. To understand how to do this, we will have to practice so that it becomes natural and instinctive. First of all, let's start by saying that in order to obtain a sound in its fullness and expression, this sound must be supported. A sound without support is an immature sound, emptied and lifeless. A sound without such support, more than played, is expelled without criteria from the body. The support will have to be muscular and we will have to locate the diaphragm and the muscle that participate in the abdominal contractions equal to action, the action of coughing a vomit. <coughs> we will identify this musculature better by emptying the lungs and emitting the vowel for a long time. This happens because in further emptying the lungs, we will instinctively intervene this musculature. Once we will become aware of this, we will try to emit a sound trying to involve this musculature by supporting the sound on it, starting the sound from it. This is an important step which leads us to a further consideration already know, namely that the harmonica, unlike all the other instruments, emits sounds in the two sense of the breath. What we have to do is reverse the procedure, considering the diaphragm as a point of attraction of the sound. The intake of air will start from that point, an aspirator from which the force is generated. The natural tendency will look for a point of support, and the risk is to find it where it would not be. A very common mistake it used the throat <coughs> or the lips. That compromise the sound, often stressed and constantly bending. It causes tension and rigidity in those areas. But now let's go back to our exercise and once we have learned to correctly support the sound, let's try to move it. In most cases, you will need to harm yourself with patience and study the vibrato of the diaphragm with the help of the metronome. We try with extremely slow cadence to give the muscle a few hits. Assume a 60 BTM metronome and tap each beat of the metronome and gradually increase the speed. For example, it is important to practice with the irregular figures such as the triplet in binary time and to get as soon as possible a separation of the cadence of our vibrato from the rhythmic progression. Remember, the vibrato is a form of melodic expression, not rhythmic. We must not be discouraged, it may be difficult in principle, to use a muscle of which we were almost unconscious, but it is the most important formative moment for giving the soul to our instrument. If we succeed, this will mark a big difference at the instrument and artistic level, undoubtedly a first and an after. The muscle of the larynx can vary the opening of the glottis, so as to vary the heart pressure. To give an indication, try to say hoo 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 from here, hoo hoo, not from here, from here, hoo 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 hoo. 
I consider this vibrato interesting provided that the correct support is maintained at the diaphragmatic level. In this way, the sound will maintain its fullness without reducing its column of air. Also for this type of vibrato, we will have to practice progressively with the use of the metronome in the blown and aspirated, so as to take possession of all the ranges of dynamics and intensity. Not to be confused with the throat vibrato. The difference is great since it will be the lower part of the tongue against the palate to run it and not the glottis. The vibrato with tongue, unlike those described so far, definitely varies the frequency of the note and we can say that it is a vibrato similar to the violin that with the oscillatory movement of the finger pressing the string creates a micro variation of the pitch by doing fluctuate the frequency of the note. Technically, the can, we can achieve it relatively simple, trying to pronounce both an aspiration and aspiration, ay 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 or oy 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 will note that the note will drop the pitch evidently at the letter high. It is a vibrato to be used with care and not abusing it so as not to break the notes. The execution risk becoming vulgar, for example opening and closing to match the jaw, which greatly amplifies the result. but obviously depends on the musical context, style and what you want to get with your execution. The schematic capitulation of the various types of vibrato will seem to indicate a clear division between them and the related techniques. Things are not exactly like that in practice. If we had adopted a vibrato of diaphragm, we could find useful, for example, on a note that decreases until pianissimo, use toward the hand a throat or even tongue vibrato. Let's see. In fact, the diaphragmatic vibrato requires a certain pressure and is ill suited to a note that goes to extinguish. The risk would be that of making feel rather than the spun sound of the diaphragmatic strokes. Various vibrators have different characteristics that can be advantageous according to the use and the context of what we want to do musically. For this, we must familiarize ourselves with the techniques listed here, beyond the preference, because they will take part on the wall of the useful baggage of harmonicists. We talked about the vibrato frequency argument which naturally leads us to the bending technique. Bending is a characteristic expression of harmonica and in particular music such as blues and jazz. Its execution is so natural to the instrument that it will be hard concern to avoid playing it when we don't want to, rather than learning to do it when we want to. The bending in practice allows you to lower the tone of the note. Answer the argument dedicated to the bending after the vibrato frequency 
as they are intimate linked techniques. So we won't have to do anything but say ay ay or oi 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 and the bending will fall to letter high. As we get the out of tone, we will realize that with small movement of the tongue, Joe, we will be able to get a noticeable control of the note on both the frequency and the timbre. Its a relatively simple execution allows us to give a lot of expression to our execution, but there is a risk of abuse. The most frequent mistake is to play everything bending by taking an emission that in practice emphasizes and bending all the notes. Obviously, every music has its aesthetic and its language, so the expression of bending will be an integral part of this type of music. For example, just listen to the great Steve Wonder exceptional artist and excellent harmonicist with an extremely bending sound, which fits perfectly to the kind of music, of music he plays. However, we have to be sensitive to the musical context in which we would like to express ourselves and assimilate the characteristics that identify each music and style and try to make them their own, to enrich and give us new opportunities for the language. So, if you want to play other music, you must be careful not to use the harmonica and the emission in one way. First of all, I would suggest to the student to, to emit a clean sound with the diaphragmatic support that we have described. Take possession of this technique for the execution of exercise and scale and after and only after trying the bending technique and apply it gradually as an expression during its performance and attain a perfect control on its dosage. Well, my friend, we arrived with this last video at the end of this small series of video tutorials dedicated to the harmonica. The topics are very extensive and it is not easy to reduce everything in a few minutes, but I hope this video tutorial can be useful to many of you. So, for the moment, that's all, folks. See you soon. Ciao.